Hey everyone, welcome to Play Hooky with me. My name is Roz and in today's video I'm going to be sharing how to design your own crochet covered rocks. Recently Robin from Hooked by Robin shared a movement that is happening over in the UK called Random Acts of Crochet Kindness where crocheters are making these cute little wiggly worms for people to find and take home. I love this idea so much and I wanted to do something like that here in the US and living near the water I thought it would be fun to do something with a nautical theme. For me that is crocheted rocks. So I gathered my rocks, I designed some covers, tucked in a little note so people knew that if they found it they could take it home, and then I sort of hid them openly for people to find. So in this video I'm going to share five steps and tips on how to design your own patterns, and then I'm going to share a tutorial so you can see these steps in action. If you want to see more patterns be sure to let me know, I would be happy to create a playlist. Step number one, choosing out your stones and rocks. Now you may live in a location where rocks are abundant, but just please keep in mind the rules and regulations with this because in some areas it's illegal to take the rocks from the location. If this is an issue for you or you don't have any in your location, then I would recommend going to your home improvement store, a place like Lowe's or Home Depot, where they sell big bags of river rocks. Garden nurseries and landscape companies often have them out on display so you can fill a bucket with them. That's always an option as well. You can also check your craft store, but it's not as uh, cost effective if you do that. And the final way I would suggest, and it's surprisingly affordable to do, is to order them online. This is what I did with these ones that you see here. I really like the color of these dark stones, and I could see that it was in the size that I wanted. These are roughly two and a half by three. Now they're not perfectly round, of course, but I didn't find that to be a problem. For the rocks that you see here in the video, I used a size 10 crochet thread with a size 2 millimeter hook. Now the recommended hook size for the size 10 is actually a 1.5 millimeter. It's easier for me with an ergonomic handle, so I went up to a size 2 and it worked perfectly fine. So that just goes to show you that the suggested size doesn't have to be the size that you use. You can go a little bit bigger or you can go smaller, really depending on your personal preference. I would recommend if you're working with a bigger size, stone or rock to try a size 3. A size 3 requires a 3.5 millimeter hook. And if you want to go really tiny and delicate looking, you can go down to a size 20, which requires a 1 millimeter. And I'll have all this information in the description box below. The easiest way to start with this is to look at doilies and snowflake patterns. These are ideal because they're more lacy and designed to see through, which is perfect when you're working with rocks. When you are looking at these patterns, what you want to focus on are the first three to five rounds because that is going to be the focal point on your rock. And that's where step four comes in. Now what you're going to be doing is you're going to be working the front of it until you reach the outside of your rock. And my little tip here is I pay attention to the pattern and I see how I can incorporate what's called a diamond mesh stitch, which is just a group of chain clusters. And that's kind of my go-to right now for completing a pattern. And I'll go into more detail with that as we're working on a pattern later, which leads us to step five, finishing. This is going to make a lot more sense when we work on the tutorial, but just for a quick overview for reducing or finishing your stone, when I've reached to about a quarter of an inch, there is a lot of stretch and give with crochet. So this is where I stop. And then I just take a tail, and I thread it through, pull tight to secure. But like I said, this will make a lot of sense once we get to the tutorial. Okay, for this demonstration, I'm going to be working with a two millimeter hook with a size 10 thread. And I'm going to be redoing this pattern here that you see onto this rock. And again, for reference, this is about two and a half by three inches wide. Fits in the palm of my hand. We're getting ready to start our center, chain six. Do a slip stitch into the first chain from the beginning to form a ring. For our petals, we're going to be doing treble crochet clusters. We're going to do three trebles together. So to get started on that, we're going to chain three or four, whatever height you like for a treble crochet. I'm going to do three. And now we need two more trebles for this first cluster. So I'm going to yarn over twice, go through the center, yarn over, pull through, 
pull through two, pull through two, and stop. We're going to be joining these together, so do not finish that stitch. Yarn over twice and repeat. Pull through, pull through two, pull through two. You should have three loops on your hook and you're ready to finish. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. Yarn over, pull through one to secure. Now four more chains. One, two, three, four. Essentially you've done five chains. Now we're going to just repeat this to make five more petals. So we're doing three trebles together. Yarn over two times, going back into the center. Yarn over, pull through, pull through two, yarn over twice, going into the center, pull through, pull through two, yarn over twice, yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull through two, you're ready to finish. Secure with a chain and four more chains. Repeat that all the way around until you have six petals. We've reached the end of the round and we've done our six clusters or six petals. And now what we're going to do is something to get us into the middle of our stitch. So instead of chaining five again, go ahead and chain two. And now we're going to do a double crochet into the top of that first cluster. So right in the top there, a double crochet. And that has gotten us into the perfect spot for round two. For round two, we're going to be working picots in the middle of these chain stitches and chain fives in the top of our clusters here or our petals, however you want to refer to it. So to do a pico, we're going to chain three and we're going to slip stitch into the base of that chain three. If you want a bigger pico, chain four instead of three. And if you're finding that the slip stitches are too difficult, then switch it to a single crochet. This is not about being stressed out. You're still going to get a lovely effect. So do whatever works best for you. Once you've finished your pico, chain five. We're going to slip stitch into the top of the first petal. Again, if you would prefer to do a single crochet, that is totally fine. Chain five again. And that brings us back to the center of the next chain five space here. We're getting ready to work another pico into the center of this chain five space. You can either wrap your single crochet around this chain space, or you can work right into the center of it. Completely up to you. I'm going to go into the center of it with a slip stitch. You may prefer a single crochet. Chain three for your pico. And working into the base again, slip stitch to form your pico. Chain five. Slip stitch or single crochet into the top of your petal. Chain five. And continue this all the way around. We are at the last petal and we're getting ready to finish round two. So what we want to do again is chain two and then do a double crochet so that we finish in the center of our chain. Chain two double crochet into the base of the very first pico that you made. So let's have a look at our rock here and see how we're looking. 
So everything's looking pretty good. Uh, this is going to be my focal pattern here and I'm ready to adapt this and create the diamond mesh stitch. The diamond mesh stitch is typically made with odd number chains, three, five, seven, nine, etc. And since I'm already working with chain fives, I'm going to continue on with chain fives. And I'm going to continue with a diamond mesh stitch working continuously until I reach the edge of my rock. We're going to skip right over our pico with a chain five. We're going to work a single crochet or slip stitch into this first chain five here, completely up to you. You can either go into the center of the stitch or wrap around the stitch. I'm going to slip stitch, chain five, slip stitch. chain five, slip stitch. I'm just skipping the picots and in all of the chain spaces, just completing a chain five. And I'm just doing this all the way around. And once you've reached the end here, you'll have something that looks like this. Now, if we were completing this round, we would do the same thing that we've done before, a chain two with a double crochet to finish in the center. But we're just going to continue on with this now until we reach the end of our stone. So I'm just going to fudge this a little bit and chain five. And skip all of this and go straight into this chain five space. Now just continue to do this round after round until you reach the edge of your rock. So I'm to a point where I think I might be getting close here. So I'm going to fit it over my rock. What I'm aiming for here is getting this around about a quarter of an inch into the back of the rock. And that's looking pretty good. Now you can do some reducing here if you like. If you wanted to come in now and go from five chains to three chains to tighten things up, you can absolutely do that. Play with that and see what you think. And now I'm just going to play with this a little bit more, making sure that I have this in a portion of the rock that I really want it to be. And once I like what I see on the front, I'm ready to start getting things finished in the back. Make a nice long tail. Go ahead and create a slip knot. And now I'm just going to take the tail and weave in and out along the edge of this crochet here. And now we're going to cinch it closed. And you can see how much this stretches. Go back to the front, make sure I like what I see. And like I mentioned before, I like to have quite an open space here because I want to leave a little note, but you may prefer to do this to where it closes completely. I've done that before as well. So I went ahead and did the diamond mesh almost to about here before I cinched it closed. And then to finish, I just go in and out back and forth here. Thank you. 